Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a system of equations. I have new merch, I shared the link with you in the description, that's going to be the first link, and I will be making more designs. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. All kinds of feedback are appreciated. And let's get started. So we do have the system, which is somewhat radical x squared plus xy plus y squared multiplied by the square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to 185 and x squared minus xy plus y squared multiplied by the square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to 65. And we're going to be solving this. Now, you might be thinking, you know, uh, since we have radicals on both equations, we might just divide, you know, equations side by side. We're going to be getting something. Absolutely that's going to be a method, but I'm going to use a different approach here. You know, with the systems of equations, there are many ways to approach it sometimes, and you never know what's going to uh, be the best method uh, unless you try it. So this is my approach. I'd like to add these two equations up, and hopefully this is going to be an easier problem compared to some other ones. I just wanted to do this because this is a really good problem, and it's not too complicated. All right, cool. So. If you add these two equations, what happens is since uh, we have the x squared plus y squared square rooted in both expressions, we can actually take that out, kind of like factor that out. And then inside, we're going to have the sum of these two expressions here. When you add them, you're going to notice that the xy's cancel out and we get 2x squared plus 2y squared. And this sum is equal to 250. I mean, obviously, we can just go ahead and divide both sides by 2, right? And what happens if you do? Well, if you do divide both sides by 2, then you get a, you know, a nicer equation. Square root of x squared plus y squared multiplied by x squared plus y squared is equal to 125. You not only get a nicer equation, but you also get something significant because notice that we have the same expression uh, inside the parentheses and inside the radical. What it means is that uh, we can actually use substitution here. So it will be meaningful, I think, to make the substitution uh, square root of x squared plus y squared equals u. And this expression is going to be u squared. So we have u times u squared is equal to 125, which means u cubed is equal to 125. As you know, with the cubic equations, uh, there's only one number whose cube is given uh, is a given number, unlike uh, square roots or squares. So we basically get u equals 5 from here, right? Straightforward. Cool. It's a one-to-one -one function. It's a bijection, so on and so forth. So u equals 5 means what? Uh, well, you can go ahead and replace or back substitute. Square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to u, which is equal to 5. From here, you can basically square both sides, but... That's actually not necessary because what you can do is you can just go ahead and substitute, right? Uh, so if you go ahead and substitute this into both of these equations, in this one and in this one, then you should be getting something nicer, right? So what is, it, uh, what is that going to look like? So let me go ahead and write down the original equations here one more time. x squared plus xy plus y squared multiplied by the square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to 185. And then we have the minus version, and that is equal to 65. Awesome. Now, we know that the square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to 5, so what we can do is we can actually go ahead and substitute that here and here, so we should be getting something nicer from here. But not only that, since the square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to 5, we can square both sides anyways, right? And this should give us x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. Awesome. So I can actually do both. What happens if I do both? Uh, let's go ahead and substitute, for example, in the first one. x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. So 25 plus xy. And then multiplied by square root of x squared plus y squared. I'm going to replace it with 5. This is going to be 185. If you go ahead and solve this equation, I can divide either distribute or divide by 5. I'll divide by 5. And that should give me 37. From here, I should be getting xy is equal to 12. Now, what would happen if I use the second equation? It will be the same thing because I would get 25 minus xy here 
in this equation I mean. And then this would be a 5. If you divide both sides by 5, it will be 13. And then you would be, be getting the same thing. So it wouldn't matter which equation you use, but you only had to use one of them. Nice. So now I have x, y is equal to 12. And I also have x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. So this basically gives me a system of equations, which is easier than the first one, obviously, right? So one of the things you can do is, you know, you can just use the formula x plus y quantity squared, or you can square both sides here. So that's one way to approach it. You can get x squared y squared is equal to 144. And from one of these equations, for example, I can isolate y squared and write it as 25 minus x squared and then go ahead and substitute that here. Let's see what happens. Let's follow that route. x squared multiplied by y squared, which I can write as 25 minus x squared is equal to 144. As you know here, we're going to get a quartic equation, but this is biquadratic, so it means that there are no x cubed terms or there are no x terms, which means I can easily solve it, again, using substitution. So let's go ahead and do another substitution here. Uh, we don't want to use um, y or u here, so let's use t. So t equals x squared, and from here we get t times 25 minus t is equal to 144. Let's go ahead and distribute this. We're going to get t squared on the right-hand side, minus 25t plus 144 is equal to 0. Okay, cool. Now, what does this give me? Well, this is supposed to give me basically the value of t here, right? And then using that t value, I should be able to find x values. So this is factorable. So let's go ahead and use factoring uh, this time. Uh, I would be looking for uh, two factors of 144 whose sum is negative 25, and those are negative 16 and negative 9, which means this can be written as t minus 16 multiplied by t minus 9 equals 0. Beautiful. So from here, we get integer solutions, but remember, t is equal to x squared. So t equals 16, which equals x squared. So from here, you're going to get two solutions for x, and both of them are going to be valid. We can just go back and check those. But as long as they satisfy x squared plus y squared, they should be good, and they do. So from here, I should be getting x equals 4 or x equals negative 4. Cool. Now, these are the x values. How am I going to find the y values? Well, y values are going to be pretty much, you know, uh, coming from this equation. I mean, it doesn't really matter which one you use, but I can just go ahead and use this one x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. So that means x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. x squared is 16. Then y squared is going to be 9, which means y is either 3 or negative 3. All right. So how do we put these two together? Well, since you're going to have, it doesn't really matter which one goes with which one. Um, so in both cases, the squares are going to work together, uh, which means we have four solutions. If you write the solutions as ordered pairs, they're going to look like this. So it's going to be uh, 4, 3, 4, negative 3, and then negative 4, 3, and negative 4, negative 3. Now, you might be thinking, like, do all these solutions work? Are they all valid? We can just go ahead and check that, but here's what you're going to notice. Now, when x and y are negative, Okay, so let me go ahead and write the original equations one more time for you. x squared plus xy plus y squared multiply by the square root of... So we always need to do the checking because, you know, we've made some changes, right, to the original equations. Like we square both sides, so that might have introduced some extraneous roots. So we got to make sure our solutions work. It's always good to double check. Okay, now, 4 and 3 obviously is going to work because it does. Why? Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay. So if you plug in 4 and 3, you're going to be getting from here 16 plus 12 plus 9. And this should give you the value of 37. And multiply by 5, this should be good to go. What about the second equation? In the second equation, you should be getting something like 16 minus 12 plus 9 multiplied by 5. And that should give you 65. Um, that should be a 12, not a 16. Okay. 
Cool. So this should give you 13 times 5, which is also good. So 4 comma 3 works. Now, if you think about negative 4 comma negative 3 is also going to work because when you square, they're going to be the same values. When you multiply, they're going to give you the same values. So these two are definitely going to work. What about the other ones? Like, let's pick one of them. For example, 4 comma negative 3. Does that actually work? Okay, let's do that here. If x is 4 and y is negative 3, so I'm checking this one. We're going to get 16 minus 12 plus 9. And then that is multiplied by 5, right? And it's supposed to give me 185, right? Okay. And if you plug in this, it's going to give you um, 65, right? Okay. So it didn't give me 185, which means 4 comma negative 3 does not work. Why, why is that not working? Because if you look at the original problem, we had this condition and then we plugged it in and then we solved it, but we never used the fact that, you know, um, if you look at the original problem, this should be good. So x squared plus y squared equals 25. But when we have a positive and a negative value, they kind of switch around. Okay, so that's the problem we have, which means uh, these two solutions are not going to work. Even though they look like they're working, you can plug in uh, into the second one as well. So you're going to be getting 16 plus 12 plus 9 multiplied by 5. So this does not equal 65. This is supposed to equal 65, right? But that's not the case, which means that unfortunately, these, these two solutions are not going to work. So we end up with two solutions, which I can, I guess, write again, 4 comma 3 and negative 4 comma negative 3. That's going to be our solution set. And this concludes the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time with another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.